as a parent, finding out that your child is excluded from their peer groups is, is quite devastating, actually. We go through a lot of emotions and we can actually get quite aggressive about it when nothing is, is being done about it. And uh, there's not a lot of support and a lot of adults don't know how to handle the situation. Now, imagine if you find out that your child is the one who excludes others. How would you feel about that? How would you handle it? So it's not easy. This is what we're going to talk about today. For those who don't know me, my name is Danielle C. Baker. I am the founder and CVO of Being Connected. I'm also a registered early childhood educator. I have 20 years of experience under my belt, and I do help and support families and parents uh, to navigate through the realities of what being a parent is to them. So we're going to draw dive right into this uh, subject today. Now, don't get it twisted. When you're working with me, we're putting your children's needs first. So we're going to have to put our pride and ego aside, and let's get to it. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Talk to Danielle podcast. I am your host, Danielle C. Baker. Before we get started, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to whichever channel you are watching or listening from. And of course, with season two, this episode is brought to you by the Self-Esteem Doctor Online Academy with the amazing, phenomenal, and beautiful Dr. Simone Alicia, who has a wealth of resources on this online academy that can help you with your children's uh, self-esteem, confidence, all sorts of different things. It works for children, teenagers, and even adults. And I just absolutely love this collaboration because the work that you will find, everything that you find in there kind of aligns with what I do. So I will add the link in the description and in the comments so that you can have a look at it. It is uh, it's a really great place to go as a parent and as teachers to uh, kind of help our children navigate navigate through the realities of life. Now, today is a, is a pretty sensitive topic and it is something I've worked in school settings uh, for 20 years and uh, we see a lot of this. And sometimes it can be okay, it can be worked through, and sometimes it becomes uh, very difficult. And if you think about a child that's being include, excluded, a lot of children start off school where this will be their first real outside social interaction. So if it comes up as them being excluded, being rejected by their peer groups, and this go, can go on through their entire academ academic life, it is quite devastating and it does quite a lot in terms of psychological and emotional development in the child that will carry through into the adult year. So we really need to nip that in the bud. I can help you a little bit with it. Every situation is different, but if we ca catch it early and we, if we react to it as adults, we react to it in a healthy way, we are able to kind of pave the way for our children to have it a little bit easier when it comes to peer pressure and uh, social interaction. So we have to understand that children, when they're in the school year, so we're talking about grade one or so, they're starting to pull away from wanting to get the adult's approval and adult's attention. Now they're becoming their own little person and now they're looking for their friend's approval and attention. So they're pulling away from that I want to please the adult and going towards I want to please my friends as they kind of discover their own personalities and become their own person. It is a perfectly normal part of development. But what happens is at that stage, especially early on, is they will find their friend group with the same interests. So they attach to the other children who share their same interests. Whether it's a sport, they like soccer, they're obsessed with gymnastics, they're obsessed with Pokemons, they're obsessed with something. They kind of bond together. They gravitate towards each other right away. And so that's basically what happens in a school setting. Friends kind of create, um, friend groups create over a same similar interest. So in the spontaneous dynamic of play in a school setting, we will see exclusions from certain children being excluded from certain groups simply because they're not into karate or you know they don't particularly like this one artist but they will find other groups that will share some some of the same interests uh 
when it gets to a point where that, that child is kind of targeted, oh, there's this one particular child who excludes everybody and kind of brings everybody in together. Uh, this is where, as adults, we need to step in. So don't forget that if you're looking as a child, you're looking for your your friend's approval. You want to be part of a peer group. If you have somebody within the group who excludes someone and you don't feel right about it, so your child doesn't feel right about rejecting another child because they like that person, but there's somebody that's pretty high, strong, and, and just is really, really serious about keeping that particular child out of the group you kind of give in because you don't want to be the one that's rejected afterwards so there's a lot of emotional and psychological issues that happens within children whether they are the one who excludes or the one being excluded or the bystander who's just kind of seeing it happen and they don't want to be the next target and uh but they also don't want to hurt their other friends' feelings. So how do you manage that? Uh, as an adult, the first thing that you really need to do, whether you're a teacher, a parent, or, or anything in between, is you need to ask and listen. This is very important. You cannot assume that you know the reason why your child is being excluded, and you cannot assume that you know why your child is excluding somebody else because as a parent if your child is the mean girl or the mean boy you will just kind of go blind to it and be like no, no no my child is fine because they're not like that at home which is true it can be very true but in a school setting again is very different and you don't know what's happening at school you really don't your child gives you a little bit of you know tidbits here and there uh, the teacher will give you a couple of little things here and there, but you're not getting the full picture. So assuming that you know the reason is the first mistake that we do. Uh, don't assume. So you have to ask and you have to listen, but you you also don't want to ask in a way that will shut down your child and not, they won't want to talk or that you'll be putting words into their mouth. So an example of how you could ask, it'd be something like, I noticed that you don't want to play with this person, I don't, you know, let's call him X. And I've noticed that you don't want to play with X. So what's what's happening? Is there something, you know, what is bothering you about that? And kind of see where that happens and just listen, let them talk. They might not want to talk right away, but keep bringing it up. Same you. So you kind of leave that open for them to eventually open up. You're not judging. So they'll feel a bit more comfortable. Uh, if the child is, if your child is the one that's being rejected, they will feel ashamed and embarrassed about it. So they will not want to talk about it. If your child is the one doing the rejection, they'll just kind of shrug, shrug it off because they're not the problem. They won't think that they're the problem. And as a parent, because your child is not the one that's being excluded, they're the it in the it crowd, um, then there's no problem. We, we don't have to worry about it. It's the other child's fault, right? So we have to pay attention to that. So listen, and once you know, then you go into a plan of action to, to kind of fix that. If a child refuses to play with a particular child, there's usually either they're intimidated by that person. It doesn't mean that they're being bullied. It just means or that this person, this child is intimidating your child. It just means means that their presence and totally like they're better to uh, better than them in soccer. They're just really loud and, and your child is more timid. They don't necessarily like that ruckus. So they would, might kind of retreat because this is, this is not the right energy for them. So there's that. Or they could just flat out be bullied. Right. They, they, they could be targeted. And that's why they just don't want to play with that child. So there's those are usually the main reasons why. But again, you need to hear it from your child, not from you just deciding that your child is being bullied. Something sometimes it's just a self-esteem issue. So you got to look into that. When there is a difference. This is why I chose to, to title this podcast. Is it an act of discrimination or an, uh, you know, an act of defense or an act of discrimination? There is a difference when a child ex excludes another child because that, that child is aggressive or if your child ex excludes another child because they stutter, let's say, or they're wearing clothes that they don't necessarily like. There's a difference. When you're excluding, um, when a child is excluding somebody because they, they play rough, they're, they're very aggressive, then that's an act of defense. They're protecting themselves from it. 
But if they are rejecting, if the reason is because they're different, they're stuttering, something like that, then that's discrimination. Uh, this is how you tell the difference. So the excluding a child from your, your group of friends could be one of those two things. It could be because you're defending yourself, you're protecting yourself from this person that could potentially hurt you, or it's just not a good influence, or you're, you're um, flat out discriminating against that person, and then there's some work to be done there. Now, I wanna make a side note for this because I work with a lot of children, differently, differently abled children, uh, and some children have challenges that most children don't have. So in, in certain cases, a child could have an aggressive outburst because they were triggered from a sensory overload. Uh, a child on, on an autism spectrum could have outbursts or meltdowns because they're not feeling well. Now, if they're being discriminated because of that, this is different. It's not because of aggression. It's not an act of defense. Yes, they may hit, they may scream, they may traumatize your child in the way that they behave, but uh, the child is defending him or herself from being triggered. So it's different. If it's, if your child is excluding another child because they behave differently because they have a diagnosis of some sort, that's discrimination no matter what. Even if that child has aggressive behaviors, we have to understand that those aggressive behaviors are different. Uh, it's, it's part of the process of learning of dealing with whatever uh, they're, the challenges they're facing. So keep that in mind if you, you're dealing with an um, autistic child, uh, a child that's ADHD or, or some kind of personality disorder, uh, their behavior is not the same as a neurotypical child. So it will be discrimination no matter what. I wanna be an advocate for that. So as a parent whose child, let's say, is on the autism spectrum and is excluded all the time because they have meltdowns in school, because the adults in school are triggering the meltdowns, and then the, the children in the class are kind of pushing him aside because they act differently. That's full-on discrimination from the adults and from the class. So we need to work on that. That's my little sermon for the day. So know the difference. It is also very important to understand that you cannot force children to like everybody. We do that a lot in school when they start in kindergarten. It's like, oh, your friends, everybody's your friend. Everybody's your friend. You share with your friend. But as they grow and they, they develop their own personalities, they figure out who they are, what they like. They will kind of, again, kind of find their own little click. And that's a healthy thing if it's uh, done in out of respect and, and in a healthy way. But uh, it's important not to say that they have to like everybody. They can like everybody but at different levels. And it's important to say that different levels of intimacy, you have a friend group where everybody's together and you know we just kind of coexist together. And then you have your closer friends, right? And then you have your family. So we have different levels of intimacy with everybody. And that's important to, to go into this with your child because you're teaching them how to handle their social interactions when they grow older. When you go into work, your coworkers, most of them are just, at work. You're not going to be spending your entire life with them outside of work. You've got your work friends, you've got your friends' friends, you've got your family friends, right? So we have different levels of intimacy ourselves. So it's important to teach that to our children so they know how to handle that when they grow old, older and they enter their workforce. Uh, it's also important to show that sometimes you're just not gonna like somebody at, because of their personality. You just don't vibe together and that's perfectly normal. It's okay not to like everybody the same, but it's very important to respect everybody the same. Um, it's also important, so teaching them the difference. Okay, that could be a close friend. That's your best best friend. And then this is just a, a fun friend that we, you know, we only see in gymnastics. We only see in soccer. We only see at the park. We only see in the, sum, in the summertime when we're at this particular cottage. Let's say I'm just giving you examples. The other thing you need to teach them is put yourself in that, in that child's shoes. So if if you're excluding, if your child is excluding another child, just say, imagine what that would feel like if you would go to school tomorrow and nobody would want to play with you. And some of them may not be able to empathize because that's a learning process as well, but make it a bit more personal and say, imagine if they have siblings, let's say, imagine if I decided myself as a mother, okay, this time your mother, say, imagine if I wanted to do a movie night 
in my room, in my bed, eating popcorn, but I only invite your brother and sister. You're not allowed it. How would you feel about that? That that really starts to get them to understand what empathy is. Be in somebody else's shoes. It's important to teach them that as well. Imagine what it would feel like if tomorrow your friends turned on you and then want to be parked, because that will happen eventually. What goes around comes around, right? So those are the two things that you could start with. Whether your child is the one that is uh, being excluded or the child that's excluding. If your child is being excluded, especially with bullying, you have to understand that these people, if, you know, they may see you differently, but let's show them that you're not that different, that we're all the same and, and try to make them understand that um, the children who are excluding, including have some work to do in their social development. And uh, that's not your child's fault. You got to make them understand that it's not your child's fault if they're being excluded unless they are you know being aggressive uh, just for fun for attention there's some work to be done there um it's also very important as adults when we hear that uh, a child is being excluded or a child is excluding it's important to circle back because of course we're going to be talking about them that's not right you got to do this you got to give them a turn you got to blah 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 but it's important to circle back and, and get updates. How is it going? Has anything changed? Any, anything better? Can we do anything else for this? So there's a lot of work there that we need to do as well. Don't just say we fixed it. We talked about it once and it's gone. It's not. We got some work to do. We got to keep on it. So there is that. On a, most of the time, when a child excludes children, they will be doing that throughout their academic life because that's how they get their attention. That's how they get their validation. That's how they, they, they find a purpose, right? They get their attention, they get their supply. So if we don't stop it, if we don't them, get them to start empathizing, to seeing the other side, to understand that you need to respect everybody, it's gonna just grow and grow and they're gonna need more attention that way. They're gonna need more supply and we know what happens then. When you constantly, when the your only identity is from outside sources, when your child is the one being excluded, it's also important to give them the tools and resources to to manage all of that. Because being excluded for your entire academic life, we're talking what fifteen years, twelve years, uh, that's scarring. That will that will leave us a really big wound for their entire life into adulthood. You, they, they become the victim and they shouldn't be. So we need to move away from that victim mentality where it's just like, well, that's just the way it is. You can get yourself out of it. Let's help you get out of it. That's the what we need to bring to the table when we're dealing with that. Um, some children, they're not necessarily being excluded from a group. They just don't know how to enter the group. There's some very shy children, timid. If they haven't had a lot of social interactions when they were younger, if it was just family, uh, they may not know how to put themselves into a friend group. So they're not being excluded. They're actually retreating. They're keeping to themselves, waiting for somebody to come and get them. But children won't pick up on that cue. So they'll just be like, oh, hey, he doesn't want to play with us. We'll just leave him there. So sometimes a child needs to be encouraged by the adult to say, hey, come, let's go. Let's go play over here. A great example of that is if there are children that are uh, into a, a, the after school program at school. So they're, they're together at school all day and then they do some extra activities together after school. But your child isn't going to that. I'm not saying you have to register your child to after school programs. I'm just saying that we have to keep that in mind that when they come back to school the next day, their friends have a whole bunch of conversations of what happened in the afternoon after school that your child was not part of. So your child could just feel excluded because they weren't part of these activities and then they think that their friends don't want them around that's what I mean when as a parent or as a teacher you say okay well let's let's get you back in they just had an activity but that's okay it's the same like in the on the weekend you don't know what your friends are doing on the weekend but you talk about it the next day ask questions how was it can you show me what you guys did stuff like that to get them involved and get them interested so 
keep that in mind as well. Your child or the child may just need to, a little nudge to say, no, no, you can go. We, we Let's go together first. And then when, when the, the roll starts, when the ball starts rolling, we can kind of move away and uh, watch them start to play. It is, uh, it is a community responsibility. That is a big message that I'm going to throw out there. Everybody, every adult is responsible, has a responsibility when a child is being excluded or when a child is excluding another child. It's not just the parent's responsibility. It's everybody, the teacher, the pastor, the uh, uh, the, the, the coach, whatever, everything, the grandparents, the aunties, the cousins, the older cousins, the older siblings, everybody has a risk. It's a community thing. It's a social thing. So of course the entire community is involved in this. So make sure that you understand that that the adults have a very important role to play for every child, not just your child, but everybody involved. So the teachers need to know what's going on. And this is the thing as a parent, you need to understand that your teacher may not know this is happening. They know what's going on in their class, but once they're out in the school year, that's where most of those things are happening. The teachers are not necessarily out there or they are out there. When I used to do yard supervision, there was one adult for 200 children. You can't catch everything. And of course, the child that is excluding another child is not going to come to you bragging about it. And the child that's being excluded, again, embarrassed, uh, sad, you know, they don't want to come forward and talk about it because they think that they're the ones that are doing something wrong. So the teachers need to know. So get your children to say, you need to say, even if your child is not involved, but is witnessing it, say, mention it to an adult. If that was happening to you, if you were the one being excluded, wouldn't you want an adult to help you? So get the the, the bystanders involved in that as well. Uh, and parents need to follow up as well. Follow up and say, if, if you're a teacher and you've talked to the parents about it, you, you've come up with an action plan, follow up with the parents to say, okay, this is what's happening. I know this isn't, this isn't an issue for you at home. It is an issue here. This is what we're doing. Do you think that there's anything else that we can do? This is where we need to be. Attended. So keep that in mind as well. Say, so what to avoid? This is what I'm going to leave you with right now is as an adult, what you absolutely need to avoid when you have to deal with a situation like this, the first thing the first and the most important thing is never underestimate what is happening to the child. Never, never just say, oh, this is, this is nothing. It's toughen up, you know. It's just child's play. Don't, don't ever, ever, ever underestimate what is happening to the child because that leaves scars for adults when they become adults. Don't over-dramatize it. Because if the child is excluding another child for attention, for supply, if you're overdramatizing it, you're feeding that supply. You are now creating this person. So you have you can't overdramatize it. If you're a parent whose child is being excluded and you overdramatize it, you're teaching them to be a victim for life, which is not what we want. Which we want our child to be happy and stand up for themselves when they need to. And um, over dramatizing it just means that they can get attention for you from that, and then they'll keep playing the victim. I've seen a lot of children who would be excluded who would go home and tell their parents that it happened again, and it would, and then the parent would come and and say, "We need to do something about this child," and say, "Well, that that child wasn't even at school yesterday, so the child wasn't there, but your child knows that that's how they can get your attention, so they will just say that they." Things kept happening that day. So just be careful with that. Um, this is the hardest part, especially as a parent whose child is being excluded. Do not act out of anger. And that will be the toughest thing because you will feel like nothing is being done. Your child is constantly targeted. Your child is suffering. You're seeing the change in them. And it's not enough. Whatever the schools are doing is not enough. You're going to come out of anger. You're going to want to take it out on that child. You're going to want to take it out on their parents. And that is really the worst thing that you can do for your child. Remember in the beginning when I told you, put the ego and pride aside. We're talking about your child's needs. 
if you're coming in hot and you start, I've seen parents yell at the other child. First of all, we're talking about empathy. Imagine if an adult will come up to your child and start yelling at them, calling them names, telling them that they're garbage, right? Empathy. We're teaching this to our child. Our children are learning through our actions. You're coming in hot, dumping on the child, starting fights. So I've seen fist fights in the school parking lots where police had to come and pick up. The parents, what are you teaching your child? Now you've become the aggressor and you have given everybody a very solid reason to exclude your child because now it's aggression. It's an act of defense, excluding your child because you are now dangerous. Now it's an act of defense. It's no longer an act of discrimination. So you got to take those breaths. No matter, you can vent all you want when you're home to your uh, to whoever you want to, as long as your children are not hearing it. But don't come in hot because now it's become an act of defense, and your child will be excluded no matter what because of you. Um, don't guilt trip either, right? The children will be ashamed. They'll be embarrassed already. So don't start guilt tripping. Don't attack the other children. Don't attack the other parents. Don't attack your child to say, toughen up, give them, you know, hit them, do something. Don't don't guilt trip. That is even more uh, traumatizing for a child. Uh, now, I'm going to sp speak specifically to the parents where you find out your child is the one that is excluding the first thing you're going to do, and I, I kind of mentioned it earlier when I went on my rent, uh, look at your, look in the mirror. Children mimic our behaviors. So look in the mirror before you start judging. What am I teaching my child through my actions? Now, it doesn't mean that you are the bully. You're not the mean girl or the mean boy of the adult world. Just look at the broader picture. In our community, in our societies now, our values, our religion, our ethnicity, um, political views, how people look, they all promote segregation. I'm going to say that again. In general, our political views, our religion, our values, and our ethnicities, and just our overall look at uh, physical appearance, materialistic uh, life promotes segregation. So if you don't vote for the right person, get out of my face, right? You don't believe in this actual God, get out of my face, right? That's exclusion. And that's what our children are getting from birth. We are teaching them to exclude people out of discrimination. It's not out of defense yet. It's out of discrimination. Some of them eventually will become defense. Uh, pay attention to your conversations with, around with a lot. We discuss political views. We discuss, ah, I've got a girl's night, but I don't want this person to come because she's so much drama when she comes around. But yes, yeah, she's so much drama, but your child is seeing that you're excluding your own friends. So there's nothing wrong with them doing it. That's what I have for you today. It's a lot. It's a lot to take in. It's really not easy. And just remember that when you're teaching your child social interactions, when they've never had any, these are their first experiences in the social setting. Uh, it takes a while to change. And you need to get every child involved. So even the bystanders need to understand what's happening and, and why it's not okay or why we need to change things so that they're a little bit more solid when they get into junior high school, when they get into high school, and when they get into the workplace. So that's what I have for you. If you have any questions, if you'd like me to elaborate a little bit more on specific situations, I can. Every situation is different, so there's no magic formula. There's no cookie-cutter way of dealing with it. But uh, if you keep in mind the points that I brought up, it's going to help you a lot. And if you need like me to do a Q&A session, a live session, I can definitely do that. All my information is, is there. You can reach me. I am a real person and uh, I can help you as much as I can. So that's all I have. Make sure to like, follow and subscribe to whichever channel you're listening or watching from. And be sure to check out the Self-Esteem Doctor Online Academy as well, which I'll put the information in the description. So until then, stay safe, stay awesome, and we'll talk soon.